Forsake not the assembly, as the manner of some is. The manner of some that forsake the assembly are the churches that are denominations, the assemblies of the gods where they have platforms and the lords rule over the people. But the assembly of the saints, the body of Christ, each member in particular, in particular is important, connected to one another for a habitation of the Holy Spirit that works through each one and some several gifts out of one person and others just one or two but everyone has a function and an operation to do administering the love of Christ and the bond of Christ with one to another growing up into the full stature of Christ now this can happen in individuals because these are the manifest sons of God. They are the pure bread, the new nature. There's no mixture. There's no sin. But holiness, the spirit of holiness rules in their bodies because the, the body is the temple of the Lord, of the Holy Ghost. And if you defile it, then you are accursed. Now you may out of ignorance, sin against your own body. But you must repent on the godly sorrow and call out for the mercy of God. It's not an automatic thing. We have to truly be sorry and we also have to obtain mercy from God. If it wasn't for the mercy of God, we would be as Sodom and like unto Gomorrah. Think about that. But those who despise holiness, those who despise the righteousness of Christ in a new believer, as they grow up, as they grow in grace, not in sin, and they acquire the wisdom and knowledge of Christ through the blood and the word and the spirit, that is why we have to study to show ourselves a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and receiving the engrafted word of God that we might exercise our spiritual senses by the meat of the word that strengthens us to go from one affliction to another distress to another persecution as we are crucified with Christ we share the sufferings of Christ, because He is our Master. He, he was an example of what we would do and go through in order to obtain eternal life. Jesus said, Blessed is he that endures, endures, endures to the end, for they shall be saved. No falling back into perdition. They don't count. Many have fallen. And some have departed from the faith. The Spirit of Christ says expressly that in the last day some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their consciences seared as with a hot iron. There's no getting to them. You cannot bring the gospel to them. You cannot tell them. You cannot restore them to salvation because they have gone back into perdition. It is impossible for them to be renewed unto salvation because they tasted of the word. They received of the Spirit and they crucified Christ, the Son of God, daily in their willful sin and their blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So this is not an easy walk, but it's the, it's the walk in Christ wherein we can have the joy of our salvation and we can know and have the anchor of our soul. The word of Christ dwelling in us, we can know that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ because he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So we know that if there is no sin in us, 
after we have repented, then we have been washed by the blood of Christ. Isn't that beautiful? Let no man take your crown. Strengthen the things that remained. War a good warfare. Fight a good fight. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And having done all, we stand, because we put on the full armor of God and the word of Christ on one hand and the blood of Jesus on the other hand. May God bless you.